Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to a new stream. Glad to have you all on board for today's stream about Ionic Calendar. Yes, we are going where nobody has gone before. We're going into the realms of dates and calendars. It's going to be painful, uh, but it's also going to be hopefully very, very helpful for many of you. Um, this is going to be probably an even longer stream than usually. So we're also one hour earlier than usually. Which means we got one hour more time, so I got two hours just for you to build something cool with Ionic Calendar, Calendar Package, Datetime Component, whatever we want to do. I have an idea, uh, we'll see how far we can get with that idea. So the idea is this. So this is a little preview on what I plan to do today. I want to build this cool Calendar Component uh, where we can skip between month, we can actually mostly for showcase, switch between a month view, week view, and a day view. Uh, we got this little cool overview about the components. We can see the events below the calendar, and we will also, on top of that, integrate this cool little um, component. Actually, let me refresh this, because this is now the iOS view. Um, this cool little overlay in which we're going to use the Ionic Daytime component, which seems to throw some errors. Uh, we're gonna withstand that and we're gonna figure out how to use that and build something cool So hopefully this will work and we will be able to add our own events to the calendar in the end um, And just in general have fun with Ionic Before we get started, I want to say thank you to Stream Deck Thank you that you worked today So you're gonna see me switch between this and that a lot of times <laughs> So it's basically the first time that this works and also thanks to my epic music I already feel totally fired up. So who's ready for some ionic fan? I see Jean-Philippe bonjour. This is basically the only thing I can say really good in French Bonjour, I don't even know if that is sounds good. Nick already uh, donated five dollars I think it's regular dollars up front to the stream. So Thank you very much, Nick. Highly appreciate that. Uh, Walid is back. Hey, Simon. I'm excited to see you create Ionic Kalanga. Yes, me too, Nick. 10 p.m. in Australia. That's a nice time to watch a stream, isn't it? Um, are you planning to do something like Deep AR and Ionic, Walid? Nah, probably not today. Jean-Philippe, will the calendar will have overlapping event? That would also be interesting, uh, but we will see. Marcin, please more React Ionic. Yes, there will be more Ionic React, uh, but for today it's, uh, today it's gonna be uh, Angela, I think, actually, yeah. Uh, who do you, uh, uh, Nick, Aussie dollars. I actually don't know the conversion of Aussie dollars. I assume it's pretty close to US dollars. Anyway, even if it's just once worth one cent, and I think it's worth more, uh, thank you. So, um, let me take a sip of my coffee. It's never too hot to have a coffee. Uh, and this this epic music list is really interesting. Uh, the problem is the lo-fi list, which I usually tend to hear, is uh, it's now a paid upgrade, and I don't want to pay because 50k subs and I still can't pay for music. Mm. But anyway, uh, this motivational music will also get us back. Simon, can we integrate screen recording block in Ionic Angular? Uh, maybe? I actually don't know. I think I read about something like that in the past, but I honestly, uh, right now, I don't know on the top of my head. Oh, there's one more thing. One more thing I wanted to mention. Actually, two things. So the first thing is I got this epic new Capacitor shirt. I'm very proud about that. Thank you, Ionic, for sending me this. Um, I had like the Ionic, different Ionic shirts for years and now I finally have just a Capacitor shirt in case I just want to do something with Capacitor. So I just had to wear it today. And the th second thing is, there is currently a giveaway. Yes, a giveaway at the Ionic Academy. In case you're going or you're watching live, go check out the giveaway right here. Uh, you don't need to have... Yes, in the end, I'm gonna pin the message. So if you join the giveaway today, 15th of June, or you can also join it tomorrow, 16th of June, uh, then you have the chance to win one year of the Ionic Academy. If you don't know it, Ionic Academy is the fastest place to learn Ionic. No, the best place to learn Ionic in the fastest possible way. Uh, so if you want to learn more about Ionic after the stream, go check this out and join the giveaway. 
Uh, I have three Simon courses on Udemy links. That is interesting because I am not on Udemy. So uh, <laughs> if you could let me know what kind of course is on Udemy, uh, please let me know. It's definitely not me. Uh, I never create. I, uh, I might have once created a course that was free and uploaded it to Udemy. But besides that, I never did a Udemy course. Uh, oh, so many questions, so many good questions. I will come back to that. Let me begin by setting up the app because otherwise we won't get far today. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we want to see some action. So let me close this. Goodbye application and let's start at zero. We're going to start, as always, with a blank new Ionic application. So let's start this one. Uh, by the way, the new CLI is pretty cool. You can now select between ng modules and standalone. I'm going to go with ng modules. Now, we're going to integrate a package for the calendar, which I used a few times in the past, which is actually called Ionic 2 calendar. Uh, kudos to that naming uh, selection <laughs> a few years ago. I'm really sorry about that. But that one has been updated quite often. It has not been updated for Ionic 7. So we're gonna have we're gonna see a few peer dependency issues because Ionic 7, Swiper 9, there's a lot of confusion around that. So we're gonna have to use a few somewhat outdated packages. But I hope that this calendar will still in the future be uh, updated to Ionic 7 and Angular 9 and web components and not using the Angular components. But my hope, my dream is that this will still work, um, still work as expected. So my app is already ready. So let's open the Ion calendar. Uh, and let's see how we can fit this nicely onto the screen to give you the most bank for your five dollars that you donated uh probably something like this and we're going in for a zoom be ready to zoom in my friends zoom Ooh. oh maybe i'm giving you five come on i'm giving you five today so you can see it even better uh i'm fancy yeah i know all right um the first thing uh yeah well maybe <laughs> First thing is Ionic Surf. First things first, Surf comes first. Simon, what are the methods to earn with Ionic App Dev other than clients? Well, just build a successful app and uh, <laughs> add AdMob. I've, I've just seen an app from David, a little game he made. He sent me an email. He was using Ionic and I think he used AdMob integration and he also wanted or has used Glassify for in-app purchase and subscriptions. So those are usually the ways to monetize your app in case you don't want to do uh, client work with Ionic. So here is the preview. Maybe we're going to use, we're going to be really tactical about the space today trying to get really the most out of this um, and we can close this no we actually can't we still need to install a few packages so let's just install the calendar because we want to use the calendar so therefore let's find the right installation this is not the installation <laughs> this is it uh, npm install ionic 6 calendar um, there's also or let's let's wait for the error so yeah, there's a problem with Ion 6 and Angular Common 15 is expected, but my project is actually using 16. So I'm gonna head to add dash dash legacy peer dependencies to install the package. Additionally, note starting from where underlying implementation is based on Swiper instead of Ion Slides, so also needs to install Swiper. If you install Swiper like this, you will get Swiper 9, which is a problem because Swiper 9 is used with Ionic 7, yes but not with Ionic 2 calendar. In order to fix that, we're gonna install a uh, version eight of Swiper. So npm install Swiper at 8.x, uh, I actually don't care about that. And I'm also gonna add dash dash legacy peer dips, which we always know I have to do. Uh, let's see, can I still do Ionic cap at iOS? Ah, uh, no. I should have done this before. Ah. Abort, abort the mission. I had this in my documents to, to not do this up front. So uh, I'm like <laughs> npm un. So this is the problem with using legacy peer dependencies. 
Uh, and what did we install as well? npm un. Uh, so I'm going to tell you why I uninstall this. Ionic cap at iOS. Now it should work, hopefully. Yes. That's better. Ionic cap build iOS. So adding capacitor uh, did fail when we used the outdated packages for the calendar and for uh, Swiper and also the rest. So I want to add capacitor now before I actually install those packages to my project. So then we should have capacitor up and running in case we want to take a look at uh, our application on a real device, which we, of course, maybe, maybe or maybe not want to do at some point. Okay, now with that in place, I think we're safe and we can go back. Uh, so back to calendar with legacy peer dependencies and back to Swiper 8 with peer dependencies. Cool, good. Uh, we sailed around that. Thanks. <laughs> good that we caught that really early. Um, additionally, do we need another package right now? No, we don't. I don't think so. We're going to later introduce more packages, but for the moment, we should be good. Uh, let's restart the live reload because I mixed up the packages and I don't want to um, destroy this. So our app should work again. Cool. There was an information about adding Swiper. Yes, this is what we also know. Add to our global SCSS. So let's put this down here. Um, and from this point on, we are able to add the calendar to our application. So let's do this. Uh, first of all, we need to add it to the module file where we want to use it. So that would be in our case, the home module. Uh, so I will use the ng calendar module. Uh, it's safe. And then is there like a minimal working version here? ng calendar. Uh, I want to add it without all of that. Let's see if we can uh, simplify our page a bit, remove all of this and that. Uh, <laughs> remove. Can the calendar work without anything at all? Yes, it can. <laughs> nice. Okay, we got a first calendar. That's good. Uh, 10 minutes in the stream. I didn't expect it to work that fast. So here we go. Um, Nick, when you get to, can you let me know the extension that fixes your indentation line wrap to make it more readable? Um, Nick, are you referring to a specific uh, extension or? Um, I, I think it's just prettier. I think it's just prettier settings uh, and the line width of prettier, which automatically formats my code. Um, so I don't think, I think it's just using the default. I sometimes, I did set this to like 80 or 120 or something, uh, but I think it's globally set. Uh, besides that, there is a little shortcut, like, um, can we see this somewhere already? Now, if you have a lot of code and it runs out of the view, you can actually press, I think, Command Z, uh, and then it will automatically put everything on one screen. Maybe we're gonna see that later. Uh, links, even in my app, I cannot run Ionic cap build Android, need to run NPX cap build. Oh, good. It might have worked with NPX. That's interesting. Jean Philippe, that was great. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I see your constructor link automatically appear on multiple lines, e private activated round. Ah. Uh, uh, I guess you mean the uh, yeah. I guess you mean like the imports here. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's also done by Prettier. Like if I put this on one line and hit save, uh, I just use Prettier on save. So those should be Prettier settings, as far as I know. Um, okay, let's have some fun with our calendar. First of all, we need to different title, of course. Ionic calendar calendar and we need a different color we need primary color that's very important for our header bar cool um 
Uh, where do we start? I think we start by setting the calendar mode. So by default, the calendar uh, view looks like this. I can actually swipe it, it's the month view. Uh, but we can create an object that we pass to the calendar in terms of settings. So uh, let's set up the calendar event in here. And I'm gonna set the mode. Uh, mode to yeah we can I mean we can set it to month now the interesting thing is which is kind of cool if I set this on the calendar so if I set the calendar mode to calendar dot mode then something interesting happens uh, because this is actually using nice TypeScript so string is not assignable to type calendar mode which means we're gonna have to fix that <laughs> And the fix from the documentation is actually to say as um, calendar mode. Could we probably, what if we use, can we use like calendar mode dot something? Um, apparently not, how does it look like? Yeah, it's it's just an, a type, it's just a type, it's not an enum, so yeah. I don't know, it's not really that helpful. I'm sorry about that. But we can change that. So let's add what we've seen before, this little segment control at the top. Uh, I will use an ion row for that. Ion row, by the way, is, uh, are you also like, Chad, are you also in, like, blah, 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 blah. do you also love Copilot as much as I do? Um, I mean, look at this. Look at the code completion here. This, I mean, this, this is almost perfect. This was exactly what I wanted to do. Maybe I've written, no, this is this is not even the code I've written before. It is different from the code I've, I used before. Um, this is, I, I just love Copilot. Like, honestly, if you haven't tried Copilot, you definitely have to try Copilot. It saved me so much time over the last weeks. Um, it pays for itself, just give it a try, trust me. If you're allowed in your company, check those. I'm not a lawyer. Um, so Copilot X is great, Nick. So how do I get Copilot X? I would love to get that. Uh, I would love to have uh, chat uh, AI stuff in here. I think this is going to be like a total game changer. So uh, how do we get this? I think it's still like you, you only get invited to that, right? Uh, apply and get accepted. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish it was that easy. I think I applied already. Um, they also like GitHub also has some co-pilot AI features for the command line. I think they are also very, very awesome. I've seen them before. Uh, anyway, okay, we got the three calls. We got the rows. Um, actually, that totally wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, we're gonna use this in a second, yeah. But honestly, I wanted to use an ion segment. <laughs> I trolled you, Copilot. I trolled you. I wanted to use an ion segment. Uh, we're gonna. I hate you, Copilot. You're smarter than me. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so great. I love it. So here we go. <laughs> Thanks to Copilot, uh, we have now the switch ready, which is between month, week, and day. So those are. I think all of the available uh, modes we got. Let's check this before I tell you something that's not true. And calendar mode. Calendar mode. Calendar mode can be. Yeah, trust me, it's month, week, and day. I can't find anything else about this. <laughs> so. Um, can get rid of that. Now we do have a nice switch between the different views. Um, and we can customize most of the stuff. Like uh, we can change the color of this uh, box. We can change how the view here looks, how pretty much everything looks with the calendar. And yes, this package is somewhat outdated, although we see like it was always updated. So I really hope at some point it will be updated for the latest version by wins SBC. Um, if not, if you would need this, you can also make a pull request and fix it yourself, of course. Um, especially like we need to fix the underlying swiper issues, I guess. 
I think it shouldn't be too hard. You just need to like rip out the swiper angular implementation and make it a web component implementation. It's probably work of a few few evening hours. Um, so I trust that at some point this package will be uh, good to go uh, by default. But nonetheless, I still think it's one of the best calendar packages. Whenever I did a tutorial on Ionic calendar, this was still like the best thing you could do. Yeah, there is an angular full calendar, I think as well. But I never felt it to be that good with Ionic. So um, I just like this component. So let's see what we can do with the component. Uh, we got the different switches. Um, let's also see how we could switch between the weeks and month. I mean, yeah, we can swipe to the side. But usually, or not usually, but sometimes you also want to see this at the top. So now we're getting a bit more into the detail. Mm. For that, I'm now finally using an Ion Row. So Copilot. Uh, now tell me. Tell me lies, tell me... So oh, no, that's interesting. Today. Ay, a Today button isn't too bad, the idea. I will come back to that at the turn of the tide. But I'm gonna put it in here. Uh, I'm gonna put it into the end slot up here. And I'm gonna uh, set it up there. So come on. Yeah. Uh, I wanna use two and two. And I want little buttons for going left and right. So ion button uh, fill should be clear and on click uh, copilot. Come on, you can figure that out. I want to go to the previous uh, week, month, whatever it might be. And ion icon name arrow back. Yes, but also slot icon only to make the icon a bit bigger as we don't have text in our button. That's the word I was looking for. So this one will be next, which also means arrow forward. And then we need to add back and next. I feel like the words are misleading. I think we should change them. Um, calendar back, cal back, cal calendar back and calendar forward. I think that's more uh, speaking. Calendar back and calendar forward. Okay, good. Uh, property calendar back does not exist. Yeah, I need to hit save sometimes. So we got those two. Let's put a column in the center here with a size of eight. So covering all the rest. And that should now use the calendar current date. Um, Nah, nah, I don't want to use it like that. So I want to use it like this. I want to add a view title. Uh, we're going to set this to an empty string, the view title. And then um, we try and update the view title whenever the calendar changes. So I'm going to display the view title. And now we set the setting here. Uh, we should be able to use on Untitled changed, perfect. Untitled changed, we're gonna set the view title to the new event. Let's see. June and, okay, I don't have, don't have the back and forward action, but June is correct, June is correct. Um, okay, now how can we go back and forward in the calendar? That's the next question. Uh, for that, we probably also should set the current date which is, yeah, just a new date, so it marks the right date. I think it's not making a difference, but in any way, I would like to set this. I think it's, it's a better idea. Now, as we want to uh, work with a calendar, we also need to access this as a view child. Uh, this is indeed a calendar component. So my cal, which is a calendar component. This, uh, yeah, it will be initialized, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> So that fixes the TypeScript issue. And now we can, with a calendar back, say uh, this, my calendar. Is this actually, is it slide pref? 
Hello, identifier expected. Um, let's see. Uh, so, um, what is the slide pref? Yes, slide pref, slide next, nice. Those are the functions. Cool, so yeah, let's try slide pref. And I assume Copilot figures this one out, yes. So, yes. So, um, we can switch between the views. I wanna align the stuff in here. Um, uh, class ion align item, is it align item center or just align or justify? No, it's actually justify. Oh, it's actually ion, if at all, ion justify content center. Uh, but it's still not making a real difference. Yeah, I mean, it's a problem, I guess, of the button. I mean, the button is centered. Are we using too much space? We're using two, eight, and two. Normally that's fine. Probably we're gonna just, nah, if we give them three, we only have six left for this. So that could lead to problems as well, right? Yeah, I mean, is any month other months have a very long name? Which month does a very February, January, December? Yeah, well, anyway, they look good. They look, uh, entertainment huge, big fan. <laughs> thank you and Louise as well. I guess you want to say the same. So thank you as well. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Oh. Okay, does it work for a week as well? Yeah, it does. And for a day? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, oh, now it get interesting. How can we actually set today? Um, yeah, I feel like this should be Copilot. <laughs> like Copilot listens to me. Uh, if I now click today, uh, it's not swiping back. Mm, so we need to figure something out. Let's see if we can uh, we can set the current date that won't make a difference starting can we like scroll back to current or something uh, lock swipe start slider on current date change uh, and select a day update how about update how about a classic update Oh, no, 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 this one update. Let's see. Ah, come on. I was putting all my hope into update. Um, what could be, is there like uh, something today set hours, lock swipe to pref. No, this is not really what I want to see, lock swipe. Okay, today does actually not happen. Uh, set, no. Mm, is there anything else in here that could be helpful to reset it? That was certainly not helpful, Simon. Uh, anything to reset this to today? I mean, update didn't sound too bad. Uh, 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 uh. Slide previous and slide next. I mean, range changed. I mean, update should just trigger it. Mm, auto select. This dot Michael dot set show event day selected. Mm. It's not really like that. What does a true mean? Uh, it's not callable, yeah, it's... This is certainly not working like it should, or like I was hoping it would. I'm not entirely sure why it's not replacing this, because internally the day is correct again. So, update should definitely work. Um, I don't know, I can't change title change or something like that. So we're gonna keep that open. I think it's probably, 
I mean, you could always just remove the calendar and show it again. Uh, I guess that's not the coolest way. Mm. Maybe I should set the current date of the calendar, not of my calendar here. Oh, we have a winner! Ding, ding, ding! Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. You're far too kind. Uh, so that was the fix. Does it work in the other views as well? Yeah, it does. Yeah, don't update the uh, calendar, just update the... Michael, maybe we also don't need the update? Is that the... Yeah. So here we go, we figured that one out. We just need to use our view child all the time. Cool. Um, uh, what else can we do? Um, maybe we're gonna add some more options because I really don't like some, some parts about this. For example, I live in, in Germany. So uh, my starting day of the week is definitely the Monday, not the Sunday. So therefore in the view, view, the Monday is now the first date. I don't know, it's not taking this for the calendar, is it? No, not really. Um, and also, uh, by the way, if you want to use a local, you can do this inside your module file. So let's say you want to have like the German calendar. You want to import the register local data from angular common and then you're going to import the local this would be france uh, i would import de uh, for the german language and then i can register my local and in the end i can set this with the providers so providers and uh, provide the local id and use my value. Now, this should change to uni. And Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag, Freitag, Samstag, Sonntag. So you learn the German days as well, uh, next to some Ionic and Angular. Um, on top of that, what can we do as well? I think we can change some colors, or we could change some colors. Uh, we could also say if you like implementing, that's actually what I did in the past. I think I used this in a real application um, and we made an application for trainers, like for they had a personal gym and wanted to schedule their stuff in between and show everything internally. Um, they, of course, ha wanted to have their start hour set because they're not starting at midnight, so they are probably starting at 8 a.m. And then you're going to also have something like an end hour um, at 8 p.m., which is, I don't know, I see US also using like a 24 hour scheme or not. Um, but then you can limit like the range of your calendar and make it really, really helpful for others in specific cases. Okay, cool. Um, I think we are ready to add dates to the calendar. I didn't expect this to go that fast, right? We could have a little chat. I mean, it's just 30 minutes into the stream and we already have the calendar. It's probably because of this motivational music. Mm. In case you forgot, take a look at the giveaway of the Ionic Academy. And of course, if you're not yet a member of the Ionic Academy, go check it out. I'm always loving. Yeah, new member, just joined right now. Actually, you've been a member before. I know that name because I sent out a personal welcome to every new member of the Ionic Academy. Yeah, I still do this even after six years. Every new member usually gets a new personal welcome. So uh, let's get back into our cool app. Um, maybe we're going to check this out on the device now. So let's do my live reload command, I only kept run iOS, dash dash live reload, dash dash external and using my own IP. And I'm gonna select the iPhone 14 Pro. Let's try that one. It hopefully works. And in the background, we should be able to use our app just as we did before, but I now also want to add dates. I want to add dates to the calendar. Uh, and if you want to present dates in this calendar, you're going to have to add something like an event source. So the event source is 
<sighs> it's quite nice to use. Um, so I'm gonna give this a type any for now. It's nice and easy to use, but it's also some somewhat limited. Thanks for subscribing, by the way. Uh, thanks for the subscription. Francais, 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 yeah. Um, by the way, this is our app on the real, real. It's actually the iOS simulator, but anyway. Um, again, I just love this calendar. You can do so many things with this. Um, if this is full of like the dates of your personal trainers and you can show different dates in different colors and it just, it just works. Uh, Isaac, not online on Twitch. No, I kind of messed up this connection between my account here and Twitch. And in the end, I mean, we got 20 people watching here on YouTube. Uh, and sometimes there are like 50 people here on YouTube. And at the same time, there were like two, three, maybe three people watching on Twitch. So... Uh, I decided that will just be live on, on YouTube and not on, on Twitch anymore. I don't know. Maybe... Do you think it would be a good idea to be on Twitch as well? Then I will somehow try and fix my connection. <laughs> um, but honestly, at this time, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. Okay, this is quite cool. Uh, the calendar works just as expected. So if we uh, work with the calendar source... Uh, we want to add dates and if we want to add dates we need some sort of form so before we actually show the events on the calendar we're gonna have to talk about uh, creating them therefore let's start by adding a fab to our view uh, which will trigger um, uh, no, it actually won't have this. <laughs> I mean, the idea was good copilot, but that's not what I wanted. Also, I want to have this vertical bottom. And uh, no, vertical is... No, vertical is bottom. Um, I sometimes confuse vertical and horizontal. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and the slot is fixed. And horizontal end so right now you can't see it but trust me the button is here <laughs> uh, it's definitely there okay now um, we want to trigger a modal from that button and since ionic 7 we can use inline modals in most of the places like we don't have to inject the private model controller and then call model controller create and pass everything to that function. No, we can just do all of that inline and it's actually recommended. So let's do this instead. So we go ahead with an ion model, which will be triggered by something. So the trigger for this is modal. And if I now add this as an ID to a button, well, let's call this my modal or input model, whatever you want to call this. If I use it like this, um, I should probably add some, <laughs> some sort of content in here. So this will be wrapped in ng template and then uh, we would have like the ion header. Yeah, something like this. Uh, ion header and ion content, my content, something like this. Probably not that. So now, if I click the button, voila, the model appears instantly. And we don't have to write any other functions, which makes it a ton, a lot, lot easier. Um, I will still give this um, template reference because I think we're gonna uh, see it later. What's that for a song? Uh, let's just continue. Um, I also would like to display it as a card. I really wanted to do this like the iOS calendar, like when you're in the iOS calendar, add something, it brings up the card view and those inputs. That is what I wanted to uh, try and show with this or in this stream. So therefore we need the presenting element, uh, which is now a bit more complicated again to set up, but nothing really fancy. So we add the private ion router outlet to the constructor ion router outlet and then we're gonna set the presenting element uh, now that was certainly not what i want uh presenting element i'll set that 
to null in the beginning. And then I'm gonna say this dot presenting element equals ion router outlet dot native element. And if we now pass the presenting element in here, then look what happens. Voila, we have this nice sticking card uh, view that you know probably from iOS. Okay, that works quite good actually, better than expected. And um, for my header, I'm gonna make this difference. I'm gonna use a light color. Uh, I'm gonna use new event. And I also wanna get rid of the border. So I'm gonna set the class ion no border. Yeah, that comes close to what you see on iOS. Mm, we also need buttons. We need buttons in the end slot. That is right. Well, we also need some in the starting slot. So in the starting slot, uh, I want to dismiss it. So ion button on click. And we don't really need a new function. We can just call modal dismiss as we gave it the template reference in here. So I will call this like cancel. And then... Uh, oops. Start. Sorry about that. I wanted to use the start. So now, yes, we got the cancel up here. Um, and on the right hand side, I will probably add a button to uh, save this. So this button will actually trigger like a schedule event. Add this in here. And if we schedule an event, let's also give this color primary. Mm, we'll also make this strong, probably not in here, but next to this. Can't just give it strong without strong true, I wonder. I think this should actually achieve the same. Okay, yes, it says cancel, but of course it should set add. And this will be disabled uh, while our new event is not legit. Uh, we actually haven't created that object, so let's do this. Mm, new event. I'm gonna use the type any. Maybe we're gonna introduce some types in the end. So this will require a type. Uh, the calendar also expects all day true or false. I'm gonna say false here in the beginning. And then we're gonna have a start time and an end time for the event and the button will be disabled while the new event this music is getting really annoying what is this i just wanted to have music that's motivational not where somebody sings um new event dot title uh, if this is not set okay so now we have the header configured nicely, add is disabled, uh, and we can create the actual inputs, I think. So let's go to the content area. And now it gets interesting. Because now we want to work with the uh, ion daytime component. And the ionic daytime component is... Uh, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> It's a great component in itself, but it's also a quite challenging component to use. If you look at the documentation, I think the Ion Daytime has probably the longest page in terms of examples, configuration, and everything that you can or have to do with it. So that makes it really versatile, and it makes it also really challenging to actually use it. Um, let's see if we can get through... Uh, this let's see do you have anything to drink coffee mm -mm. Nope. Four or four no coffee found uh, Apparently a lot of Brazilians here Josema. Is that true? Are there a lot of Brazilians in the chat? <laughs> Let me know <sighs> Awesome awesome great, let's continue um <sighs> I'm gonna make a little break, I think, at, at 3 p.m. in 15 minutes. At least a mental break, probably not a real break. <laughs> so, 
Um, we're gonna wrap these things a bit. We're gonna get some group styling going in a second. So first of all, we need an ion input and we don't need an uh, item anymore. That's also the cool thing. So since Ionic 7, we can just use an ion input and define title, help label, note label, validation, everything on the ion item. So you don't have to use ion item, ion label, ion input and all the stuff around this. No, we can just use ion input now. ng model will be our title. Uh, placeholder will be also title. Let's also say type text. And can we use self-closing text? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're so fancy today. Uh, okay, there we got the title. Uh, additionally, I wanted to have some styling for the group. So let's see. And uh, we can get rid of that and do some group styling. So I want to have this like on iOS. Uh, therefore, we also should give the ion content class, let's say modal. And then we can give the modal a background color. Mm, background, can we can just do it like this? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, if I spell this correctly, maybe. Yeah, okay, that is right. So let's use um, ion color light for the background. Oh, that also ties in nightly with the header, right? Yeah, then we just have this gray area. Cool. And then our group can have some... Uh, some styling. Where's the group? Okay, this is now getting unbelievable small. Let's see if we can still do this in here. Uh, trying to make this a bit bigger. Okay, Simon, this is a really bad idea. Uh, we're gonna get that. So let's give the group a background color white. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't want... We definitely need a border radius of, let's say, 10. Okay, makes it rounded, makes it rounded. Then we also add some padding. So that's interesting. I don't want to have the same padding everywhere. So I'm going to use the four values of padding. And I always forget, I think... Uh, the first one is like either the first one is bottom or left like let's try yeah the first one is bottom then left now top let's use two pixels or something and then right i'm gonna do eight again okay and we have this cool uh field let's also add some margin bottom uh, margin bottom 20 for everything else that comes after this group and I'm gonna copy this, put it in here, and voila! We are done with that. Nice. Cool input. Cool. This is my title. Uh, I can now also add this. That's a good good starting point. Uh, how do we get back from <laughs> this here now? Uh, uh, so much zooming and swapping. Okay, here we are back. All right, um, after our input, we also need another group. Let's add another group. And in the next group, we're gonna have the uh, all day switch. Uh, so now, um, I'm actually using an ion item because I don't think this will work in a different way. Ion label. Uh, then my doorbell just rang. I don't care. Just drop it off. Just drop it off. And don't come to my house now and pick up my stuff. This is my training equipment. It's not for you. Um, we're gonna add a checkbox or a toggle. I think we're going with a toggle. I on toggle the ng model is all day. Yes, that's good. Let's see. Oh, I wish this model was just up all the time. Uh, okay. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. But um, I don't want that um, lines. So we're gonna say lines equals none. And then we can also, I think. Get started with the starting time. I think on iOS, this is also the place uh, where they have like the starting time. 
So this is now going to be interesting because we want to use the ion date time component. And at this point, as I said, it's getting challenging. Uh, where is my date time stuff here? So we can use the date time in different ways. There is actually a date time button, which is kind of cool. It looks like this and it brings up this picker view. Now we could do this. Mm, there's like, it's kind of easy to do it like this. Uh, this is just connected to like something that pops up. But if I want to do this in line, it won't work great. So instead of that, I just want to have the ion date time basically displayed in line in my item. Um, so let's see if that's possible. <laughs> I'm going to add it in here. And after the toggle, I'm going to add, as I said, uh, another label. Um, it should say something like, um, thanks for subscribing, Emra. Welcome to the Simonix channel. Uh, starts. Ion label starts. Um, let's see if this works. Okay, cool. So we got the uh, input, but of course, uh, there's something off. Oh yeah, I put all of this in the item. So this is a new item and the ion daytime should be in this other item. And <laughs> it should only, the daytime stuff here should only appear once I click on the starting date. So I'm going to add to the item an ion text. We're going to fill this out in the end. Uh, selected date. This will basically be in the slot end of the item. So we have the item. And when I click on the item, uh, I want to show my uh, date time component. So I'm going to give this the template reference start. And uh, it will only be shown in GIF if we show start and here I want to say show start equals not show start and then we can also add that to page so let's say false and we probably also need this for end let's see so we got this I can click this and ah, bruh, I probably don't want to put it into the ion item maybe maybe it's better if I put it below it but it's basically what I wanted to see in here uh, also for this one, do I want, maybe I actually want to see the lines. I kind of feel like I want to see the lines. In the, the lines. No, lines, not, not lions. Anyway. Um, so, uh, let's hit save and then we can take a closer look at what's going on. Um, we can do this. So that means I can somewhat copy this logic. Uh, and this will be show end. So this is for selecting the end date, selected end date, ends, and end. Okay. Um, additionally, what we might want to show is let's see. Actually, this fits pretty nicely into this. Um, there's one more thing. Um, if we select all day, I only want to show day and currently, can you see this? No, of course you can't. Uh, here is also a time selection, which comes from the type of the ion date time. So we're going to change that first of all, and that is the presentation. Um, so if new event dot all day is set is true. In that case, I want to use date for the presentation and otherwise we're going to use what we currently have or actually not what we currently have currently I think we have a uh, date time but I kind of feel better if we have the time up front so we're going to use time date and we're going to add the same snippet to our end date which means if I now add a date so by default it will look like this but if I switch this to all day we would just have a day selection and we can't select um, uh, time. Cool. Cool beans. Otherwise, everything else seems to work pretty good so far. 
So we're going to connect this now to the value of our new event. Value new event and this one new event dot start. Um, actually, uh, it was start time, not start and and time. It was and time. Come on. Okay. Uh, putting this back to the side. So, uh, is it possible to have two modal one over other like Airbnb? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I haven't tried, uh, but I think it should be possible, Isaac. Actually, interesting. I'm gonna try this afterwards. Um, I never. Tr I think I never tried that one on. So now, if we work with the Ion <laughs> Calendar, uh, the uh, yeah, the Ion Daytime object, they work with ISO dates in a specific format. So what we need to do or what they recommend to do is to use the date FNS library. We don't need moment, we don't need a huge library, but we should use a certain library. So as we have problems with our uh, dependencies, we're going to have to install date FNS with legacy peer dependencies as well. So let's install this. And once we got it, we can use it. So we're going to use this. Um, how do we use this in the best possible way? Uh, I think if we select an event in our calendar, we're going to set the starting time and the end time. This is a bit, a bit challenging, but nothing we can't do. So bear with me. This is going to be a bit challenging in terms of the dates and, and stuff. So for our calendar, we can define now on time selected. Uh, this will get some parameters. Let's go back to uh, the home page and check it out. So if we want to add on time selected to the calendar, where's the ca where's my calendar? I completely lost track of everything. Um, on time selected. This is whenever I click on a slot here. I want to call on time selected with this event. So with that in place, uh, are you able to use it in here directly? Let's see. Event. Where? How? Who did it select caps? It wasn't me. <laughs> come on. Uh, come on, copilot. No. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know exactly what, what what this means here from Copilot, but let's just add a little look here. Um, uh, let's head log. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, this uh, new event. Let's see if this works. Uh, property schedule event. Who talked about schedule event? What is schedule event? Oh yeah, there's a schedule event. Yes, yes, we need that. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, we automatically get this log because initially this date is selected. Is this good or bad? Um, I think it's actually okay. Uh, we have set the starting time to an ISO string and we have set the end time to an ISO string as well. Mm. Okay, okay. But I feel like, okay, this is now uh, something we could do. If we are in the week view and selecting a time slot or in the day view, I want to immediately open my model with those values being selected. So if um this start calendar current no mode is equal to month or this start calendar mode is actually day or week in that case i want to present the modal so let's call this start have i added the modal oh i think i haven't right so let's add another view child um, this is, yeah, I think we gave it the name modal. 
So modal, ion modal. And yes, this will be defined as well. Uh, this dot modal dot present. Let's see if this works. Best case, so here it's not working, of course. Uh, but, okay, so when I now switch to day view, or week view, it automatically opens. Um, I mean, it's not too bad. By the way, this is the 17th of June. Um, it's correctly selecting the date. That's really interesting. So the code that GitHub uh, Copilot wrote is actually correct. Selected date 8 and 9. Nice. It's even adding one hour to the date. Uh, this is pretty cool. Question, is Angular dead? There are very less tutorials on YouTube. Nope, Angular is not dead at all. It's going great this year, actually. Um, I'm still using Angular right now. <laughs> um, many people are. Uh, yes, React is more dominant, but Angular has a big uptick right now, especially with the latest version 16 and all the changes that will come this year. So nope, Angular is not dead. Um, okay, cool. Uh, this is actually very impressive. Um, the problem is I also want to present this as like um, like a, like a formatted string. I mean, the time selected is correct, but our placeholder here should also show like uh, 8 a.m. Or, or something. So I think we need two new values. Let's call them formatted start and formatted end. And whenever we select something, we're gonna set this. So we're gonna set this dot formatted start to, uh, actually don't know, let's let's see what the result of this would look like. I honestly don't know. I, I really I really dislike dates. Um, so it would look like, like this. Mm, no, 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 no. Let's use it in a different way. Let's use format. Uh, so we're gonna use format from date FNS. That's why we installed it And we're gonna use this new event start time mm, What's that format that is? Uh, yeah, let's see Ooh, uh, On time selected invalid uh, subscriber We probably have to restart the live reload, probably. Uh, yes, I still want to use my iPhone 14 Pro simulator. So give me time to dance a bit. Let's check it out. A little dance, a little celebration dance of how far we've come already. We got a calendar already working. Uh, we got the Ionic daytime component and now we're getting into adding those events. And eventually we're gonna also add storage so we can store the events. That's the master plan. So back to the code, back to working code. Um, uh, we still get the error. Um, error invalid. Oops. I think. Uh, okay, yeah, we're formatting the ISO string. That is usually not working. I think we need to use the selected time. Uh, format the event dot selected time ah uh, but ah uh, uh, but if we then change selected okay we probably should do it in here and then we can do it after we set the hour uh, we can again say this formatted end selected yada 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 yeah that sounds reasonable let's see let's see we select something and it says June 16 12 p.m. and June 16 1 p.m. Mm, not too bad but let's try a different time format let's try this one hour hour minute minute uh day and year, year year let's see i saw this one as well online before so that would say 12 o'clock june 16 
Yeah, I like that one more. The first one was good, but this this is better, I think. So now that we got a formatted start and we got a formatted end, we can exchange this in our HTML. Uh, so the selected start becomes formatted start. And we're going to copy that over here and say formatted end. So if we did everything correct, we should now be able, let's say I'm going to select tomorrow the 16th and open it. It shows 12 June 16. Nice. If I get into the day view and I'm on this, let's say I'm on the 19th at 9 a.m. Yeah, nice. Ah, not nice. How is it saying nine in here and seven in here? I hate dates. I hate them with a passion, really. Uh, so, um, selected get hours plus one. Uh, so seven, eight, nine. Okay, this is like some time zone shit i really hate this i really hate so let me let me show you what i had before uh, i'm gonna comment this out and i'm gonna um try this one here instead just for reference and seeing if this one works better and then we can talk about if so uh let's go back to date now i wanted to do like 18th at 9 a.m Okay, this is totally not better at all. <laughs> uh, that's probably even worth. I, mean, I don't know what the XX is doing in here. Um, maybe there was a problem. Let's say tomorrow, 16th at 9 a.m. Okay, yeah, so fair enough. This one works better. This code works better. It's basically doing the same, uh, but we format a bit different. So I'm still adding one hour to the later date. And then using just a tiny bit different formatting for that date. Uh, okay, so we're gonna roll with this one here because this actually allows us to have the right selected date. Now, what if we change the date in here? Oh, good that you ask because uh, that's actually hard. So we should probably have two new ones for a uh, starting date changed. And this one will get some kind of value. And then we will also have end changed. And those could be triggered whenever we change uh, our date time. So I'm gonna add this to the date time as well. I on change, no, this is not what I wanna do. What I wanna do is I wanna call uh, start changed with the event. And same now for this one here but end changed <sighs> with that in place um let's see what kind of value we actually get uh start changed uh, uh so start changed we get this stuff in here ion date and detail there's the value that's the value we need um actually we could probably um, <laughs> oh, I think we can do this in a different way. Let's not use the event. Let's use start dot value and let's use end dot value. So we're using the view child reference or the template reference directly and then the value. And if we no change, yeah, we're directly getting this value. That's even better. So if we directly get that value, we can just write that directly to our time. So new event dot start time equals value. And we also have to update our formatted start. Uh, where's, where's by the way, my formatted start? Why is this a way? Uh, who removed that part? It wasn't me. It certainly wasn't me. Anyway. Um, I think, yeah, probably like this, but 
<sighs> this is the value is now once again an ISO string. So if we change this, what we saw before is an ISO string. So as far as I know, we need to parse ISO with a value and then we can set this to all formatted start. And then we can do exactly the same in ain't change. So Copilot, can you figure this out? Of course you can. Thank you very much. So let's see. We're on the 15th. Uh, from 12 to something, I'm changing this to yesterday, the 14th. I'm changing this to 13. And it's correctly updated in our formatted string as well. Also here, if I go to the 30s, uh, 30s, is that what you see? And then scroll this to some random. Yes, nice, cool. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, how you play around with the calendar. As you can see, it's not a beauty of code. Like, I'm not very proud about all of this, but it gets the job done exactly how we want it to. So I hope this <laughs> this part of today's stream was helpful. Uh, as you can see, it is somewhat challenging, but it's definitely possible with the right combination of ISO dates and conversion of the different dates to uh, the strings. Usually what I have whenever I work with the calendar is I'm gonna have the actual starting time, which we're setting here uh, to an ISO string. And then I will also have like a formatted string that just represents a human readable string because the start time that's under the hood used for the ion daytime component is usually not what you wanna present to your users. Whew, uh, that part was hard. Uh, I need a drink. Ah, the music is also fitting. A bit of like calming down. <sighs> you ready? Ready for the final step? Final step of adding those events to our calendar. Let's do this. Uh, we got the schedule event functionality. Um. We also got an event source. Yeah, that's cool. But we probably need some kind of conversion up front. So let's try and create a new event. So let's call this to add. And this will be of the type calendar event. Did I come up with that event myself? Oh yeah, I think I came up with that sources. Um, so meanwhile, I think we're gonna need a little service to manage that. So let's do um, and the Ionic generate service services. Let's call this one events. And we're probably gonna, while we're here, let's do this while we're here. So my, my dream is that we can use Ionic storage. So I'm installing Ionic storage right as well. Uh, I do have more videos on using Ionic storage with Angular and the different things. So. Uh, if you don't know exactly how it works, go check them out. Uh, for now, what we can do is we can just go to the events service that we created. And in the event service, define a little... No, I don't want music with people singing, please. <laughs> in the event service, I'm going to export a little interface which makes it easier to add events for the calendar because they're gonna have a title, they're gonna have a start time, an end time, and the all day Boolean flag. Additionally, we're gonna um, start the Ionic storage connection in here. So let's quickly add our storage in here and make sure you're picking this from Ionic Angular. We also need, or we don't need, but it's always recommended, like a storage key, I'm gonna call this my events and I'm gonna add a function async init which will call await this dot storage create and we're gonna call this right in here perfect now if we have it like this the only thing uh, actually I will not do it in here I want to do it from my app component so I'm gonna inject it in here uh, the events service event service and then I will directly call this dot event service in it so this gives you the chance if you would manually control for example the splash screen you could show the splash screen 
you could uh, wait until the storage is created and then hide the splash screen. That's like an easy way to prevent any kind of race conditions uh, between storage and, and loading data. So with this in place, let's see, we're gonna add a function get data that will return all of our stored events or an empty array. Uh, we will also have a function to add some data so if we want to add data, async add data, uh, we're going to have an item, which is a calendar event. Okay, we're going to try and get our own data. That's a good start. Then we're going to push our item to that. And then we're going to, yeah, perfect. Perfect copilot. <laughs> Applause for copilot once again. Um, we're gonna leave it for now. So that also means in my home page, I should now be able to um, load the event source right in the beginning. So let's maybe do this in an on init. I don't feel good about doing it in the constructor. Implements, what is this calendar component? No, <laughs> on init. And then we're gonna add ng on init, actually making this async ng on init, injecting our private events service. And once we call this here, we're gonna set my data source. Do we have this? What it was? Events, that's the name. Uh, equals await, yes, nice, okay. Um, are we running the app? Oh, I need to select this every time. I should just pass the right ID to the command. That would be a whole lot easier than this. Anyway, so we, oh, this is now coming back to schedule event. So now we can also add the calendar event and say, okay, we have the title coming from the new event. We have the start time and the end time and all day, but the start time and end time are ISO strings. And if we use them, I don't want to use the preview here right now. Uh, null injector storage. Oh, that's actually a good one. Good catch. We haven't added the Ionic storage to our app module. Thanks. That was a nice catch. So adding this to the imports, Ionic storage module for root. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to get down that route. I'll just give it a name and then it's fine for today. Uh, name, whatever, events db. Uh, events, cannot find module, yes. Okay, here we go. Now all good? Yes, all the good. All good in here as well. Okay. Um, back to the home page. And if we schedule an event now, as I said, the start time here is an ISO string. So let me, let me, let me just lock this out because we're not really adding anything yet. This won't hurt. I select something like tomorrow, cool event. And if I now say add, uh, we have those ISO dates and the calendar package will not be happy <laughs> about that. So we're gonna convert them into regular dates again using just new date constructor and that should be fine. Let's see. Um, actually, we should probably change my interface. I feel like we have to change my interface to have dates in here. It makes more sense. Okay, now once we got that, we can actually add this simply to my event source. Uh, this dot event what's it called event source push um, at the same time i want to add this so it's stored in my event service yeah it's not the perfect sync so we could probably also get back the data from add data and then like have a subject and uh, yada yada i mean it's not too hard to figure that part out mm. but we also need to call my calendar load events after we changed the event source, especially if we just use push on the event source. I think 
if we reset the whole event source, we probably wouldn't need that. But yeah, that's maybe a different story. Um, yes, that is a good catch co-pilot. I also want to dismiss the modal at that point. And I want to reset my new event to the initial values. Thank you, co-pilot. And once again, five seconds saved. Okay, we're ready. Let's see, for tomorrow, uh, I want to have a date, date lunch with my wife. That should be around, uh, probably around 11. We're fasting almost 18 hours, so we get hungry early. Uh, and it takes two hours. Sounds good. Let's add this. Uh, we want to add this event. It's just not showing up in my calendar. No. Why is the question? I could have many reasons. <laughs> I have many reasons. Oh, actually. <laughs> okay, I think I know the reason. Uh, I'll give you a second to think about this. Um, why I'm not seeing the event in my event source, in my calendar. Because Simon is an idiot. Simon forgot to add the actual event source, the most important part to the calendar. So this is the most important line for the calendar object. You have to add the event source so it actually shows your events. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, da, da 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 da. There is the event, and notice, we just reloaded this page, and because it's stored, I retrieved this information from Ionic Storage, uh, and it shows up right here. Isn't that great? Uh, now, one thing that feels strange to me is when I go to the week view, it automatically opens this. I think there is some. Some auto, auto select, let's set this to false and maybe this fixes the problem. Yeah, that fixes the problem. Cool. Uh, I can also click here, make this all day today. And it shows up here, I mean, the space used could be a bit better. We could probably have like our own template for that. But it should also show up now here as an all day event. Nice. So that means the calendar works, the modal works, the date time component with ISO string works, and the storage to Ionic, the, the storing to Ionic storage works. That's good. Um, I think we get space and time because we're quite quite fast actually to do a little bit of customization on the calendar, which is an interesting topic. So if we, for example, um, want to show, I think I found, I, I don't know if I actually found this somewhere, uh, but I'm going to show it to you how it works anyway. So for the month view display event template, uh, or for actually tons of templates, you could create your own custom template. Um, these are the template customization. So you would create your own ng template for something. And then in the calendar, you would say, hey, for this and that template, please use my own template. And there are a few like month view display. You could just got to figure out what you want to replace and uh, day normal view, week view, day view. This is probably day view, all day event section, something we could take a look at. Uh, because that kind of looked messed up for our all day event on the, th ah, for the day view, it's actually good for the week view. It has a problem, um, but we're going to try and set the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is another thing we can do. Let's quickly do this. So of course, if you select an event, uh, you will get back the information from the calendar. Uh, let's just say event, any and event selected. So if I now select this event here in the week. Uh, uh, ah, okay, because I'm in the week view. Oh, I can actually, there's like no way to actually select the event now, right? Uh, okay, yeah, that that is a problem with this functionality or because I haven't saved. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so now I can select this and yeah, for week and day, we added this custom feature that whenever we select a time, it also immediately brings up the view. 
uh, but it also shows us this information. Now, the, this is a little problem as it only gives us all day, end time, start time and title. And if you really work with a system of um, trainers, whatever, employees and resource management, it's kind of hard to have just events that only consist of all day end time start time and title like only those four properties you usually need a like a unique id to retrieve information about that event i'm not entirely sure how i would handle it i think if i was serious about this i would probably fork the calendar and add an id field or i would add a certain pattern to the title of every event but that could no that's actually a very horrible thing to do um just retrieving it from start time and end time yeah it could be challenging i mean you can still get the ids from like you, you make a call to your api um so imagine you have an api that returns all the events for a certain day you get the array of events in your app and you add them to the event source of this calendar no problem, works. You can beautifully display all the events on the calendar. Now, if you click on one and you wanna edit it or apply changes, you just have to make the connection locally in the app. So once somebody clicks in the app on this specific time slot, and I think that should be just one event with one time, with the same time, start, end, and title. And then you make the mapping to the item from the array you got from the backend, you still should be able to get like in the background the ID. So there is definitely a way to handle this. It's not a beautiful way. So I would really love to see an ID field or something more in here. Uh, but that's just my two cents on this problem. With that being said, let's try to add a custom event. So I'm gonna try and replace the, what is this month view? Display event template. Yeah, let's just use this. I'm gonna just call this one template. And then I'm gonna add below somewhere here my own. Ooh, that's interesting. What is this? Copilot, what is this? Uh yeah, copilot. That was that was really helpful. Um that view seven plus column. I honestly, I honestly don't know what Copilot is doing here. <laughs> I will just add a, a T in there. Uh, okay, yeah. So now we've replaced. <laughs> now we've replaced the month view uh, display event template, which you can see seems to be the current uh, date in the calendar. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Let's move this to the side again. So moving it here and we're going to try and make this somehow useful by displaying how many events happen on that date. So um, there are a few things that we can use here. So we can try and I think I did I get this from here probably. Let's see. I probably got it from the repository. Um, <laughs> Month view, display, something, yada, yada, yada. Uh, um. Or there's another possibility. I also did this tutorial in the past. So I assume that I just figured something out and, and made it. Let's try. Okay, so this is just view dates, row, time, seven plus, column, dot label. Okay, this is just the number label. That's good. And now below that, I want to display a little indicator. Let's call this indicator container. Um, and then, yeah, somewhat like this diff class equals uh, indicator. So we're gonna have to write a bit of CSS later indicator. Uh, and we're going to display this indicator ng4 for all the events of that date. So let event of uh, view dot dates dot no row times seven 
plus call. So that is the object here dot event. And then just let, let's just let's just so show a star. Okay, you see? So let's add another event here. Second event. I don't care about the time. So then it shows two stars here. And that helps us to customize the view. So let's say we're gonna have like uh, not a star, but the indicator container and the uh, event indicator look like this. So we got that one and then we had the indicator container. Uh huh. Uh, let's. Mm, I don't know about that personally. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to have to use it a bit differently. Uh, I want to give this a little bit of padding. Uh, let's just say padding right uh, 0 0.4 and padding left as well. And then the actual event indicator is just a color. So that's just going to be uh, var, ion, color, whatever you prefer. Let's use success. Because we have already the blue, we're going to make it just 5 pixels times 5 pixels. And then we of course need the border radius. And let's see. Okay, not too bad. Uh, I just want to show it next to each other. So if I give this uh, display flex, uh, we got that and then we give it a line item center uh, and a little gap of two pixels. And then we have a beautiful visual representation of the events on a day. And again, this is another reason why I like this calendar because you can actually do a lot with the template customization. If you check this out, the template customization um, there's really a lot. Like where do we where do we struggle? We struggled with a uh, weak view all day event template, right? This is the one we kind of struggled with. Let's see if we can come up with something better for that. Weak view all day template. Let's add this. Uh, weak view all day. I'm gonna set also gonna set the initial calendar mode to week while we debug this. So let's see. Okay. We see that it displays the title, but it's not really using the whole available space in here. Let's try to figure this one out. Uh, div class calendar event inner. There it is. Top. Why hasn't it? Why? Why wizard zero? Uh, week. Um, I'm gonna call this week event. I'm trying to replace this with a width of 100%. Maybe that's already the fix. Let's see. Nah, would have been too easy. Uh, um, so calendar event. But calendar event. Oh yeah, I still need to go down to calendar event in our, okay, calendar. Ah, I don't want your whatever. Yeah, okay, so the inner is now using this. The problem is that the parent element is actually using inline styling. Ooh, ugly, very ugly. Why is that the case? Calendar cell is perfectly fine, but calendar event wrap, I mean, calendar event wrap is also perfectly fine. It's just the calendar event is not correctly calculating its width. I feel like I've seen that as an issue uh, on the repository. Let's check it out. 
Uh, change weak view. Possible I have a weak view like this. Yeah, it's probably probably possible. Uh, on the header section background, all day event is showing up in two days. Uh, template, drag and drop, change weak view. Oh yeah, drag and drop would be cool. Wrong hate when using start hour. No, it's actually not not a. Not a no, I feel like. Um, yeah, thanks for ringing again. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna try and set the calendar event. Maybe I can do this. Uh, like my last last idea about this. Let's do this at the topmost place here. Uh, I'm gonna set the width to 100% here. Uh, nope, it's not picking up that one. Mm. I don't know why the calendar, I mean, actually the class is calendar event, not week event. But I feel like if I use calendar event, I'm gonna replace a whole lot of other CSF styling that I don't really wanna replace. Uh, what if I gave this important? Okay. So does this work? Okay, nice. <laughs> we finally fixed this. Uh, yeah, well, again, probably not the coolest thing now, but we were able to fix it and customize the calendar because it is that versatile. Um, also, if you wanna apply different colors, you can just do this with a CSS. So if you check this out, uh, month view primary with event. Let's give this a try. Let's set the background color to ion color. Whatever, what is, uh, let's use medium. And then this one, this green, gonna set this to month view selected. Month view selected, gonna set that to a background color of primary. And if I go back, we're gonna see we have the great uh, gray lines here. Actually, I don't like this. Let's try light. Uh, and while we are at it, I can also go back to monthly mode. So we start on the right day. Holy moly, month. Calendar mode. Now I destroyed everything. Uh, in which place did I destroy this? This dot calendar. I just broke broke the internet. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. If I use light for days that have a calendar, I should probably also improve the uh, the number here, what's it? Month view primary with event. Do we already have month view primary with event? Uh, month view primary with event, yeah, that's this one, right? Yeah, month view primary. Uh, so in that case, I could probably just set the color to black. Oh, come on. Oh, I need to probably use important again. Okay, now we got the perfect calendar. Ah, yeah, and if it's selected, I will actually set the color back to white and make it important. Ah, perfect, beauty, beauty, perfection. It just, it just works. Um, if I click on the events here, this actually triggers also another event. Uh, that should probably be uh, on event selected, did we already implement that one? Mm. Uh, oh yeah, we are locking that out, right? Yeah, event selected, so that works as well. Okay, I think that's actually it for today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this stream. Uh, after the last stream, I was a bit... Mm, tired because like there were just 10 people in the stream and not a lot going on so i took two weeks break and thought about the idea of the stream so streams in the future will hopefully be 
a bit longer like the one today, one and a half, two hours or more, and we'll show a complete, like a whole topic, like this one about building the calendar and doing everything. I could have also done this as a tutorial, um, but I wanted to do like these full project builds in the live stream. And that's also what I plan for the future. Like not just having the casual live stream, like the primer gene or other people like casually talking, but really implementing something great and also creating something that's going to be helpful afterwards. So if you're looking at this stream afterwards, I hope you also found this interesting. Thank you once again, Nick, for once again, donating. Uh, David, can you customize the calendar navigation to use different animations? Uh, I don't know exactly about that part of the customization. You might have to check out the docs here of the calendar. Uh, again, it's the Ionic 2 calendar. Uh, Edo Mias, I just came. Will this code be available? Good question. I will try to provide it, uh, especially for the Ionic Academy members. So if you're not a member, go check it out, ionicacademy.com. Uh, thanks, Nick. Thank, thanks, Jean-Philippe, for sticking around. Uh, thank you all for being in this stream. I'm going to be on vacation next week. Next week, I'm going to be on Majorca. The weather is going to be epic. Starting at Wednesday, there should be like 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're going to be there for 10 days. And currently, it looks like it's going to be straight sun for 10 days. So you won't see me in a stream next week or the week after. And maybe also not the week right after we get back from vacation, unless I figure out a cool topic with Ionic or React Native uh, during our vacation. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will try and send some pictures on Instagram. You could follow me. You can definitely uh, find me there and enjoy some great builds with Ionic. And I will catch you in the next stream.